Hello, we are in the midst of major assignment number two. Last week was all about analyzing and figuring out patterns. And now this week, I want to spend some time discussing what happens in the second half of this assignment. Uh, and to do so, uh, I'm returning us to this generic thesis that I provided you. And so now we're going to move away from this blue language. Uh, I've crossed it out. And we're going to discuss the yellow language and the green language. And so the yellow language is part two of the assignment. And I think the easiest way of understanding part two is to think of part two as the transition in the paper. This is where you move from your earlier discussion about patterns and you now draw conclusions about the values or the ideologies or the cultural narratives that you see underpin the patterns that you have already discussed. And so um, I've also given you a link to uh, our paper uh, about GNC. And you can see here that I've provided a paragraph uh, where I've moved the conversation from a conversation about the patterns that I see in GNC to a conversation about the values that I see underpin those patterns. And so in this section of the paper, whoops, I'm sorry. In this section of the paper, um, I'm really just asking you to transition and to highlight or emphasize the values that you see. Uh, although in my example I bring in a little bit of research, I'm not demanding that you bring in any research uh, here. Really, this is a section where you clarify which conclusions you've drawn. Uh, now, uh, that's the transition move. The green section now uh, helps the paper uh, broaden a little bit. And what I mean specifically is that once you've now pinpointed the values or the narratives, uh, I then want you to consider what other discourses in the culture share those values or ideologies or cultural narratives. And so in this section, you're now bringing in other examples uh, from other discourses. And when I say that you're bringing in other examples, uh, I'm now uh, referring to research. In other words, uh, you can bring in screenshots or hyperlinks or direct textual support mm -hmm. from other discourses that you see uh, use language in similar ways, that use language that's underpinned by similar values. And so now the paper broadens. And now your conversation that was specifically about GNC becomes a conversation about how multiple discourses play on this idea of the illusion of medical credibility in order to gain profits. And so now I'm moving outside of just GNC. And I'm thinking about what happens in the anti-vaccine movement. And I'm thinking about fad diet. Because I see that all of these sorts of discourses share in a certain value system. And so again, Again, if you take a look at the example paper, I've given you a couple of little paragraphs that model for you the sort of framing that I'm looking for in that section. And also uh, in this section, I want you not just to consider what other discourses use these similar values, but I also want you to consider the values of the ideologies or the narratives themselves. I want you to take a stand on them. Uh, what does it mean that we live in a culture where there is this illusion of medical credibility? What does that suggest about the culture? Uh, do I see that as potentially problematic? Do I see that that can potentially be changed, etc.? So ultimately, you're taking a position at the end of your paper on the values, the ideologies, or the narratives uh, that you see underpin the discourses that you've discussed. And so our paper starts with a very, very specific analysis of a specific discourse. And as we move through it, it starts to grow. And so by the end, the paper becomes an argument about how we feel concerning a particular value, uh, ideology, and or cultural narrative. Uh, I hope that this clarifies. Take care.